So we've had uh, a growing number, rapidly growing number of therapies available to treat uh, people living with MS. And uh, these include treatments uh, in recent years that are higher efficacy and in the balance uh, don't really sacrifice at the level of safety. And so uh, we now have treatments that allow us to escalate gradually if we wish, but also to start with a more effective treatment up front. And the value there is that we think that if we prevent injury early on, that will translate into better outcomes in the long run. And conversely, any injury that does take place, we really don't yet know how to fix. And so the imperative is to try to treat early and to try to treat uh, very effectively with ongoing monitoring of the treatments that we have. The multiple options allow us to consider what is most suitable in terms of lifestyle considerations, uh, in addition to the quality of life and the balance between efficacy and safety for individual uh, patients, and also the opportunity to switch if one treatment with a monitoring is viewed either as not controlling their multiple sclerosis sufficiently or not being tolerated or unsafe in any way. While the trend in MS in uh, recent years has been to uh, use higher efficacy therapies early on, there are still those, both uh, clinicians as well as patients, who prefer to escalate gradually, uh, prefer to try the uh, treatment that uh, may be least strong, in a sense, against the immune system, uh, but perhaps the safest, uh, with the view that perhaps that is sufficient to control their MS. Uh, and that may be appropriate for certain patients, but we probably think that if we look more closely, as we've learned to do, even patients who seem to have relatively benign MS uh, take hits over time and don't do as well in the long run. And while there will always be a segment of patients who can probably have their MS controlled with the first-line therapies, many of those individuals eventually do require additional treatment, and once ground is lost, we don't quite know how to regain it. Hence, in general, the trend to higher efficacy therapies early on. While we're not perfect at identifying early on what the course of a person will be in terms of the natural history of his or her MS, we have clues uh, we've used for years in terms of uh, aspects that make us concerned that a person may not do well. Uh, males, uh, a lot of MS activity early on, uh, activity that involves motor pathways, brainstem pathways as opposed to sensory pathways, all purport a poor outcome and would warrant uh, higher efficacy therapies up front. Similarly, if there's a lot of activity on the MRI, we tend to want to acquiesce it as quickly as we can. All said, uh, we, we consider still what the prognosis may be uh, best we can and would opt for higher efficacy therapies, but I think our threshold has changed and we are more and more inclined to treat with effective therapies earlier on uh, than before.